Oh, what a beautiful day. I got a beautiful feeling. Everything's going my way. I think in America you call it chum, don't you? We call it burly here in New Zealand. That is a Sonic from Junkie Jigs. Pop them over the side. What you, the idea is you just let that go down right to the bottom. And then when you get to the bottom, you lift it up a little bit. And you just slow jig it up and down. And we're down there now. We're about 15 metres of water. And it's just a gentle slow jig just like that there, up and down. And if you want to target, say, Gurnard, those nice orange carrots we like to eat from the sea, then uh, you'll let your kayak drift around. You've got better chances of, and you'll bounce it off the sand and it's the bouncing off the sand motion as it comes up that the uh, fish will take it. Right, we'll just uh, fish like this for a while and if we get any hits I'll report back. Oh, we just got it now and that feels like a snapper. It's taken like a snapper. Oh yeah, come on baby. First fish of the morning. It's got a good fight on it. Oh, got a bit of colour. What is it, a kawai? Ah, oh, she's got some fight. What is that? I'm going to get a snapper on this, but yeah, that's playing like a snapper. Got colour. Well, here we come. Coming up. Coming up too. A pinky, eh? Come on, some nice snapper. Look at that. What a beauty. On the junkie jig. Hoo-hoo. Yeah, he's fighting like fury too. Yeah, it's a beauty snapper. Nice pinky. Well, we'll get the bloody net, I think, on the sky. Oh, lovely. Lovely, tell your mother. First snapper of the season for me. And it's a beauty too. Oh, lovely. That's really made my day, that has. Oh, nice big fish. First snapper of the season. Hey, mate, how you going? Woohoo! On the Sonic. And uh, the Sonic's pretty buggered too. Look, she's been smashed off the bottom a bit, but still worked. A nice bloody pan size snapper. That's the first fish of the season. <laughs> you cracker. <laughs> right, we'll give him the knife, stick him on ice, uh, put him out of his misery. It's a good fish. A really good fish. It's uh, made my day. I'm going to diamond score the fish and then I'm going to take the fillet off. Put the garlic in the pan. Diced fish. The skin still on. Put a bit of onion on top of that. Capsicum, some lemon juice for cooking in the butter. This is our broad beans. Just roasting this here. I'm going to put that there onto my spinach and watercress to give that some juice. Kerbera, which is in the air fry. It smells divine. Ooh. There you go, young lady. Here's your tucker. <laughs> Thank you. I like the young bit. <laughs> Take it on the balcony while he's outside. There may be the occasional bone in, in these squares because mm -hmm. I've, I've diamond scored it. How do you find it with the skin on it? It's beautiful. Mm. Yeah. So that's the wing. Yeah, that's the wing. It's pretty moist, the wing. It's very moist, yeah, no, mm. it should be nice. Anyway, I'm going to hopefully go fishing tomorrow again. I've tidied up my kayak rack. Doesn't look tidy. My new kayak's ready to go tomorrow again, all set up. So if the uh, wind isn't blowing its tits off like it is right now, I'll head out again in the morning and get you some more fish. Mm. Cool. Yeah. No sooner has she arrived than she's going again. Been there for a solid 12 Yeah, so long as you've ever been. From China to Nelson to Hawkatika. What's the next move? Christchurch. Okay. Then in the North Island again. In a month. Alright, sweetness. Well, love you. Drive safe. See ya. Parked up down here and recognise this van. This lady was parked up down here too. Been camping down here. Fancy meeting you here. She's probably going to want me to get her some fish now for dinner. Let's see how we go. I'm going to very quickly go over what my rig is today. I've got a 50 litre bin there with ice in it. 
and some burley. Got a nice seat which comes with the model. A pod in here I can put stuff in. I've got a couple of rods. Over there I've got the Taika Bora with the Maxil reel and I've got a Tyser on that one. And this one here is just a standard reel, the old egg beater. And I've got a junky jig on the end of that there too. I've got a few junky jigs that I'll be fishing with today. I'm not using any bait at all. These fellas here, they're a fantastic uh, jig. You can get these from junky jigs. Talk to Mark Rudolph, he's your man. There's the Falcor, my favourite one, and that's what I'll probably be fishing with today, is the uh, Falcor. Uh, the anchor's got a chain on it with a float, so if I need to jettison it, if I get a big fish on, I can throw the whole lot over, and the float will look after my anchor so I can come back and pick it up. Uh, I've got a couple of GoPros, and the condition's looking good. Let's get in the water and see if we can catch some fish. Well it's exactly midday and the fishing's supposed to be good today from midday almost to about 2.30 so that's going to be good uh, going hopefully. It's always a little bit more challenging paddling against a onshore breeze. We've got a nor'easterly blowing around about 10 knots so you're going against that. The outside temperature is 23 degrees. The water temperature is currently 18 degrees which means that it can be holding kingfish if we uh, get in the vicinity of them. I'll put down something a bit bigger. The uh, humidity is 50% and I'm very much paddling on my starboard side trying to correct it because I don't have a rudder working right now. Shit, I don't know what that is. Far out, that feels like a John Dory. What did I pick up? Something off the bottom. Oh no, it's a bloody rock. Oh jeez. Off the bottom. Yeah, oh, far out. It got my hopes up. And that's why I don't jig it off the bottom because these rock stuff you, you jig, that got me. Oh man, what an anti-climax. <laughs> so thought I had a fish then. Because John Dory will do that. No. Nothing venture, nothing game, Clay. Don't get your dinner because I'm not. You'll catch something, just have patience, boy. Been out here for ages, I'm not giving up yet. We just got hit. Finally got hit. Wow, I'm not sure what this is, but it's got some some power to it. I'm not sure if it's a snapper or a kawai. Whoa, good size fish though, good size fish. Just hit me now. Oh, it pays off, stay on buddy, stay on, stay on. Whoa, stay on. What do we got on here? It's coming up. Uh, nice snapper. Mmm, not the boat yet. A red. Oh, and he's, he's hooked just under his gill, not his bloody mouth either. Look at that. Oh, you beauty. Stay on there, buddy. A red. We're going to get him in. Well, he's in the boat. Yeah, he's in the boat. You beauty. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Well, first snapper of 2024. It paid off, man. Been out here for ages. Getting wet. He wasn't going to come off. Look, he's well and truly hooked on both. What a cracker. He's a beauty. He's got both in there. We're going to give him ice. Actually, we'll give him the knife first then put him on ice. What a beautiful, beautiful size snapper for the pan. Bloody cracker. Well, that's made my day. I'm going to say it's about a 35 centimetre snapper. This is the view from Miss Julie's van. The old Hilux over there come on and she's got a cup of tea for me. This brings back some memories. Cheers, big ears. <laughs> Cheers, Tommy. This is where I met Julie, right here in this very same place. About nine months ago. Many fish ago. <laughs> Many fish ago. And she uh, was camping out and I caught a fish and gave it to her and she made me a cup of tea. It's probably the same sort of tea as I'm having right now. It's the same cup. Oh, a real feeling of uh, satisfaction. These fish are just great. What I've done is I've taken the scales off around here and on the head because I'm going to keep the wings and I'm going to take the fillets off and take the skin off there. Today I'm just trying a different method for the hell of it. You can see I've done my cut down here you'd normally do but instead of taking the guts out the guts are still in and I've come underneath here right through at the back and I'm leaving the rib cage on and I'm just like flaying that off the rib cage. Well that's the first, never done it that way before, and it's uh, it's worked pretty good. That's a bonus fillet there, and it's bonus there. And no real waste that I can see. Uh, that's just the middle piece I've taken out, so good. 
I'm pretty stoked with this because I've got the wings and I've scaled them already so there's no scales. I've taken the belly flaps which do have skin on them still and I've got all these fillets which are boneless so it's actually worked quite good. I might try that again. Normally I'd cook this and make a fish dock but I'm not going to. I'm going to feed that to the chickens. We'll get it back in the form of eggs because they need protein. Hmm, not sure about the black. Maybe when the whole thing's painted black. Wait till it's finished? Okay. And they are sweet, they'll explode in your mouth. Just magic. Good to go. Add a bit of uh, spice to our life. They are plentiful. This plant just keeps on producing and producing all the time. These are the second lot of snow peas that I've had growing, and there's a few starting to come on too. I love these things. Just nice eat like that. I quite dare to buy at the shop these, so it's worth putting them in as a crop. They're really nice in salads. The subrogated plant is just going to town. I've got a lot of the actual fruit or vegetables growing high. Oh, there's a courgette that's gone too big. There's already a marrow. I like them on the other size, they're nice and small. You can cut them up and put them in the pan. That could have got bigger, but that's the size I like. Old mate here is getting a bit too big too. We'll take him off. Got a nice big telegraph cucumber here. Look at the size of this guy. Bigger than the ones in the shop. We'll take that for salad. Another type of cucumber here too, and we'll take this guy as well. Two different types of kale for some green. I wasn't sure when to harvest this, and one of you told me, one of my patrons, that when the tops are uh, going this colour, this one's actually broken off, they're ready for harvest. That's a bit small, but some more bigger ones up here I might take. Oh, here's a really nice one. This could be our first corn. Wow, look at that. Wow, that's a nice one. Fat ass. I was really pleased when one of my patrons also told me that you can actually eat the leaves of your kumara. And they're full of lots of goodness. Vitamin K, which helps you coagulate your blood, stops you bleeding to death if you cut yourself plus many other things. This is my first ever successful broccoli and I'm going to harvest this one because it's going to seed if I don't get to it. Well that's the head and the plant I'm going to take it out of the ground for the chickens. I'll tell you what, she's a hard road trying to find the perfect woman. Lucky you have been. There's not many of us left. <laughs> you reckon? Yeah, do, 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 do. Enjoy that fish ladies, there you go. Wrap your laughing gear around that. Bit of green stuff for you. Make that into eggs for us. Corn's going to town, and I've got my veggies also steaming in there. Chop some walnut. I'm going to put that in. The corn is done, and I want to cool these off again now. Make them nice and crisp. Cold water. You can use ice as well, but cold water will do. I've diced up the snow peas and mixed that in with the tomatoes. We drain vegetables on top of that. This is a local. Apple cider vinegar, just a bit of olive oil, beautiful stuff. Butter from New Zealand grass fed cattle, nothing fancy here, fish just go straight in the pan like this, there goes our wing, laying our fillets down away from us, that's a bit of belly, just a pinch of that pink salt we love to use, turn these guys over very quickly, they've only had about a minute. I've got a container here of sunflower seeds and also pumpkin seeds. These are really good on a salad. Cooked to perfection. Finishing touch, a little bit of lemon. There you go, man, there's your fish and chips. Perfect. Bloody beautiful. Mm. Good tucker? Really good. Yeah. Mm. First snapper of yeah. the year, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. It's the first time I've been out fishing this year. Yeah, very nice. Mm. Catching out the sheep, doing pretty good. Gary right up the top of the bloody patch of wood, eating the stuff that's growing on the top of it. You had a good day? Mm. Mm. Greater as a fucking thing, about a hundred. Easy hundred. Is that right? Yes, it was massive. It went from... I only saw it come out of that little bit of gorse and went straight over. I well, suppose so lifted it and we've lost and we're not going to get that either. If we walk down there with Pace, we might be able to get him because he was coming. So he's gone over the top, okay. We can intercept it with Pace. There was a bore at the top of that ridge there that Poe lifted and it broke and it came right down here 
That's its mark there. I don't know if you can see it. If you're a pig hunter, you know what you're looking at. Nut tried to stay with Poe, but he got uh, into some thick bush. You can see his eyes are pretty knackered. Poe said plenty of hunt left in him, but he was in the wrong side. Young fella actually spotted the boar. How did it look, mate? Big. Yeah. Yeah. How big do you, do you guess it to be, just if you had to make an estimate, what do you reckon? Probably 100. Right. And the second pig, probably about 60, 70. Mr. Piggy's sneaking out. We knew there was one here. He's going up now. He's a nice pig. He's a nice pig, but he's sound to us. He got our scent. He's going down, yeah. He's going down. I don't think he's that big. The dogs have wintered him. He's going to get in the road. Let's just watch where he's on to us. Look, there he goes. The dogs will get him. They're not going to get him, mate. There's no chance. He's not that big. He's not a big pack. There he is. He's crossing the road. He's hoofing it down the road. And he's off. He's got a plan to get out of here. Yeah, he wasn't that big, but there'll be more up here. Yeah. Poor old nuts tracking him, but he's miles behind. Yeah, I bet your Poe and Poe's already down there. Do you think they're already ahead? Poe's actually in front of Pace too. Look, there goes Poe. Pace. Pace is coming up there. Yeah, Pace is miles behind. That pig's a good, oh, good three minutes in front. Yeah. There goes Pace going, yeah, it's probably a 40, 50 pound pig, but uh, we're not going to get it. It's miles ahead. Oh, you did give yourself a beauty, didn't you? Eh? Yeah. Yeah, push that. Hold on, you hold that there. I am. Okay, not quite as ideal as I wanted to go. Right. Right, that'll stop you bleeding to death. You okay? Yeah. What's the, is it stuffed? Yeah. Stick a knife in it and, and take it back and put it on the spit. Caught this pig, nice one. Should have named it socks, eh, when we got it. Way. Keep turning it and do it that way, it's a good way to do it. There you go. So we're cooking the biggest part that's going to take the longest on the lowest part because there's more heat coming up than up there. And the biggest part of the pig is always the back legs. This is where I'm sleeping tonight, Clay's tree hut. Come with me, up in the tree hut. So this is the bed, and that is the tucker. Baked beans good for your heart, baked beans make you fart. The more you fart, the better you feel, so baked beans for every meal. Ha ha, got it. So my steamed veggies are ready now, and I poached some eggs. Got some broccoli, some cauliflower, and some eggs. Mm. Tastes pretty good. Hot though, really hot. <laughs> Mm-hmm.
echt heel leuk. Oh, hot, hot. Right, right get towards your fingers, son. Come around salt and apple sauce. Put on the pork. Should be enough just there. The apple sauce and that tastes really good. Mm -hmm. It's got a lot of juice in it as well, like a lot of juice. That's really good. Nice and tender as well. Really nice and tender. It took a while to cook, but it was way worth it. Eh? It was really worth it. To spend all that time sitting there and cooking it. It's really good, the apple sauce. Really good, yeah. Smack a like for Lucas. I'll give you a like, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was good cooking too. A lot of work, eh? Yes. Yeah. Are you full? Nah. <laughs> So what I've got is, I've got these wheels, and they make life so much better. I've got a 50 litre bin full of ice there. I've got four lots of burley, because I like to burley out. And uh, I've got all my fishing gear, and I'm carrying quite a bit of weight. But uh, without the wheels, well I've done it without the wheels, but it's a drag. Like this here, I can do it anyway, we'll see you down the water. Right it down, that's a feeling of achievement getting that beast out there. Morning! I carry quite a lot of stuff with me out here. There's my skirts. This is a great big falcor. That'd be for deep water. And plenty of those skirts. A chasing kahawai. That's a nice one. That's actually really good for salmon, that one. And this is a kraken. It's a great big kraken. Not bad either, but probably a bit big for out here. There's my favourite one, which I've got on the other side. So we'll see how we get on with that uh, fluorescent falcor on this side. Got a bloody fish on while I was winding my line in. It's gone around the bloody anchor. It's gone around the other line, I think. Fuck. It's gone under here. It's just pulling it in and a bloody fish took it. Off the bottom. How about that? Just only got here. Feels like a little snapper to me. That's hard case, isn't it? That's a good sign. Oh yeah, that's a good sign. I feel like it's a snapper. Yeah. I think we might have a snapper in the boat. We ain't got the boat yet, but it's a bloody snapper. A little panty. A little panty there. Oh, look at that. Holy shit. Oh, mate, did you get hooked in the eye? Oh, no, in the mouth. There we go. Little pan sized fish. That's about a 30. We'll keep that. Happy days. <laughs> They're out here. I think we're going to have a good morning this morning. I didn't even uh, put the burley down. Still got the burley cradle up. Right, put you in the boat. That's the old junkie jig catching that. The old Falcor. Happy days. This is another slider I've just put on. It's also a Falcor, but it's one with a fluorescent on the outside and a skirt. I have only caught one fish, and I've been out here now for about three hours, so changing the pattern. I was using this one here. They're very similar, but the bigger eye might bring something in, so we'll see how we get on. And hopefully we catch something more. Just got a wee hit then on the uh, junkie jig. There he goes again. Oh. We're on, I think. We got him. We got him. Not a big one. Coming up quite fast. Just a small panty. Coming up fast. Oh, come on, buddy. Just a wee panty. Oh, no. It's a bloody... Uh... Oh, nice. Nice to get one of those. Beautiful. Nice mackerel. I thought it was a snapper. That's a lovely eating fish. Mackerel high in oil, beautiful. Oh, it's been a long time since I caught one of those. And on the Falcor. Oh, just off now. Did himself a favour, did me a favour too. And we'll put this back down, there might be a few down there. Nothing wrong with that. Nice smoked as well. And uh, also nice sashimi fish. The Japanese uh, love these. I think they like them for the high oil content. But we'll poke them in ice and uh, good score. 
See, it's had his uh, fin bitten by another fish at some stage as well. It's been bitten off in the bin beside our snapper. Nice and cold in there. I think we've just hit another mackerel. Feels like one. I reckon it is. Yep, coming up like one. Oh, look at that! Foul hooked him. Oh, mate, you're only a tiny little sucker, aren't you? So they're around there. Okay, well, how are we going to get you off? Hey, look, you've done it yourself. Nicely done. Back in the sea where he belongs. Oh, happy days. The wind just turned around. It swung around about 10 minutes ago. And now it's blowing side on shore. I was punching up against the wind, but now it's turned. And this is so much easier. And I'm almost on the beach. Well, it was uh, six and a half hours. Two fish. Pretty, probably the hardest fish I've ever earned. And people swimming down here because it's about 30 degrees. We're on the home run, it's about 27 degrees. I've been following Miss Judy on the bike. She's just taken her helmet off. We're gonna go and check the status of the garlic and see if there's anything to harvest because the rust has obliterated all the leaves. What do you reckon, can there be anything under the ground or not? Well, hopefully, after all your hard work. Yeah, we, a lot of hard work. But sometimes the crop share fails, so what we've had is we've had rain the last few days to soften the ground up and now's the time to harvest so we'll do our last bit of sweep get to the top yeah. <laughs> we're both a bit buggered we've had a coffee and it slowed us down we have had a coffee and it slowed us down don't know if you guys can see up there in the trees what a great day for it, it must be nice up there right now beautiful Whew. gonna trade hats and go and check out that uh, garden I'm put a fork in the ground and see what's going on. Check it out. Right. Well, the mulch has kept the ground reasonably moist underneath, but what do these guys look like? Oh, the moment of truth. Oh, very small garlic. Not great. Disappointing to say the least. Hmm. Yeah, well, we'll take them. Some bigger than others. Julie Harvesty, that's an elephant garlic, I think, or it's just a bloody big garlic. Some of them were actually quite big in the end, turned out good. We've got quite a few. But this is just one patch, I've still got one more patch to harvest. So that's actually promising because I thought we'd lost our crop, but some are quite small, but overall, pretty good. You're looking for the fattest corn, aren't you? Oh, yep. These are the first blueberries that I've grown. Gonna pick some of these for Judy as well. And tell me that's not the best blueberry you've ever had in your whole life. Actually they are. Aren't they brilliant? They've got flavour. They yeah, have, eh? I'm gonna just do scores on the angle like this. One way. The old summer flies have come in. Get a bit of fish. What would summer be in New Zealand without a few blowies coming on your tucker, eh? So it's a diamond score. We're gonna go this way. This really does muck up the integrity of the fish as far as strength goes so when it's in the pan you're only going to turn it once and we're going to do the same on the other side flip it over and the same again I burgled a bit of the back of the fish for bait when I was out there not that it caught anything but I tried a bit of bait fishing as well I only caught one snapper and a whole lot of mackerel one big one and a whole lot of wee ones it was probably one of the worst days fishing so we're going to just go like this first while I'm doing this Judy's got one of the garlics out of the garden How's our garlic looking? Good. Look at them. Fresh. Yeah, they're, they're usable. They're not big, but they're usable. Cut some really fine strips of fresh ginger here. What do you see when you see this here, Julie? What does it look like to you, mate? What do you see? <laughs> well, mine kind of bubbles, but... What do you, what do you see, mate? I see um, testicles in a very small penis. <laughs> I didn't see that. Oh, geez. So is that it there, is it? Okay. From looking from behind, sort of, you know. <laughs> looking uh, at someone's shorts. Yeah, no, I didn't see that. Um, can't what did you see? No, I actually saw a man, like, um, with a big nasty nose and he's got saggy ears. His eyes have disappeared up there somewhere. But no, you saw <laughs> testicles and a small penis, each their own. Cool. <laughs> However, you'd like to have it. That can, can go in the boiling water. 
hearty thank you to the good bastards that sent me this here. Virgin olive oil, mixed in with that there. This is the hard bit. That side's been stuffed, so I'm gonna tip it over and then stuff this side what's in the pan. So while this is going, we then stuff this side. A bit of ginger, piece of garlic, tomato. Right, moment of truth. My head's looking a bit pink still, but how we underneath here? Oh no, she's done. That's good. Just gonna put a bit of lemon on this just to set it off. Oh, it smells great. Mmm! Mm. That ginger is beautiful. Isn't it? Oh. it just tastes so much better than what you get at the shop, eh? Mm. Just so much better. The colour's more vibrant, so it hasn't been. Yeah. It hasn't been um, packed in crates stored mm -hmm. in the fridge. Yep. Everyone that said my head a poke it round to see which one's yep. biggest. Yeah, right. Hey guys, that's my video today. Hope you enjoyed it. I think Miss Judy could say that the fish was a winner. Beautiful. Thanks for watching and good luck with your own fishing. Right now the fish are actually gone out. There's seven hours at sea to catch one snapper. They've gone out into the bay. They're probably spawning, but they will come back in normally later on in February, even through to March. So we'll be doing quite a lot of kayak fishing. Be good, can't be good, be careful, and I'll see you next video. See you later. Bye.